This won't apply to everybody in the same way. In fact, for some of you, this might never apply to you. This might never happen to you, but, but for others, this may have already happened to you. It might be happening to you, or someday it might. But if the people who said that they were going to be there for you and check up on you haven't, and if someone that you thought was going to be a really good source of encouragement and help turned out to be the opposite, and if somebody who promised to love you didn't, and it hurt, and if any of that or all of that has happened in such a way that it's caused you to look at yourself and wonder if you're the issue, then you might know what it's like to feel very alone and helpless. And if you do, you have something in common with David. King David expresses the same type of thing in Psalm 22. In verse 11, he says, Do not be far from me, he says to God, for trouble is near and there is no one to help. When I think about the Bible and I think about people who were in situations where no one was there to help, there is one situation that pops into my mind more quickly than any other. And that's Hagar and Ishmael. In Genesis chapter 21, you might know the backstory of Hagar and Ishmael. They have something to do with Abraham and Sarah. And if you and I have known each other for a while, you may have heard me talk about Hagar and Ishmael. But Abraham and Sarah, they were promised a child when Abraham was 75 years old and Sarah was 65. That's what God said to them. You will have descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky. At that point, they didn't have any children. And so they were very excited, but then 10 years went by and no children, nothing. So Sarah and Abraham came up with this plan to help God along. They thought, Sarah suggested, why don't, why don't you sleep with Hagar, my servant? And maybe that's the way God intended for us to have children. I mean, at that point, Sarah was 75 and she wasn't getting any younger and 75 was past the age of childbearing even back then. And so that's what they did. And Hagar got pregnant, got pregnant and that was Ishmael. So Ishmael's Abraham's son and, and Hagar's son. But that wasn't the way it was supposed to go. That wasn't... Um, that was them taking it into their own hands and taking it out of God's hands. And that created a lot of friction, especially between Hagar and Sarah. And so when Isaac was born, 15 years later, um, Hagar didn't have anything to hold over Sarah anymore. And Sarah had her boy and she could, she could tell Abraham, they're not needed anymore. We have the, the child of promise. And so Abraham kicked him out. Hagar and Sarah, and they left, and they were out in the wilderness. In Genesis 21, it tells us that, that they were out there and they had nothing. There was no one there to help them. They had been kicked out, and nobody was coming after them. And Hagar was just convinced that they were both going to die. She looked at her son, who was almost dead, tucked him in underneath a bush where he was going to die, and then she walked away because she couldn't stand the sight of, of her son dying. And she was convinced she was going to die because she had no one and she couldn't help herself. But that's when God stepped in. That's when God sent a messenger who said something really significant that told Hagar, don't worry, Hagar, God has heard the boy crying. He responded to the tears of the boy who was sitting there all alone underneath the bush. Reminding Hagar and Ishmael and all of us that when we feel alone, we are never really alone. God sees us. God sees us. And what kind of God? First of all, a very gracious God. Uh, Hagar caused a lot of trouble. Ishmael caused a lot of trouble. We'll get into that in just a little bit. But, but there was friction. There was pain. There were accusations. Hagar was not nice to Sarah at all. And so God coming to them wasn't deserved. And the same way that God coming to any of us isn't deserved. God was gracious. He was kind. He was more kind than anybody would have expected him to be. And then secondly, if you fast forward a little bit, or more than a little bit, and you follow the, the descendants of Ishmael and the descendants of the Israelites, you see that those two descendants didn't always get along. 
for a very, very long time. There was also a lot of pain there and a lot of trouble and, and a, lot of, a lot of hardship, a lot of broken promises, a lot of fighting, a lot of war, a lot of death. Just a lot of, a lot of everything. But God would have known that when he saved Ishmael. He could have left him there all alone just to, just to die and spare a whole lot of people from a whole lot of pain and a whole lot of trouble, but he didn't. And the fact that he didn't reminds us of something about our God. That God's not afraid of trouble. It doesn't make him nervous doesn't make him scared. He doesn't get discouraged when bad things happen because he knows that he has power over all of it and he has the ability to use all of it in a way that's going to serve his good purpose in the end. And what is his good purpose? Well, to answer that, think about the day when God was all alone. People were watching him. People were there with him. They weren't helping him. They weren't loving him. They were killing him. He was all alone. And why was he all alone? Because he was a man of his word. God had promised to be with you always. To always be a God of grace. always be a God that you can put your trust in whenever you feel alone knowing that he sees you he hears your tears he sees your needs and he knows your future it's the one where you get to be with him where with your eyes you'll see that you were never really alone this whole time he was always with you, doing more for you than you could ever see or would have ever imagined. So when you're alone, just remember, you're not, ever. Rest well tonight, my friend.